Hey, Doug, I want to show you what I just got. Oh, cool. I love that football. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at the horse. Yeah, I know, but look who signed it. No, is that, is that their coach? No, it's Peyton Manning. Ex-Colt, Denver Broncos. Oh, I've heard of him. He plays quite a bit, too, don't you think? Uh, he plays on occasion. Mostly on defense, right? Collecting autographs of famous and influential people is one of the oldest hobbies in the world. Today, we're going to meet a man who will show us some of the things he's collected and warn us of the pitfalls associated with the hobby. Well, Tom, I appreciate you uh, inviting us over today. Oh, you're welcome. How long have you been collecting autographs? About 50 years. 50 years. I started when I was a kid writing to the presidents. Ever since that time, it just it grows on you. And then, and then back in about the early 70s, I got into it big time. Ever since, I've just been an autograph hound, you might say. Really did a lot of studying, seeing what kind of things were real, what were not real. It's the detective work that goes behind the collecting that is what makes it fun. Finding out if the signature is real. You mentioned presidents, so I assume you have a, a, a big part of your heart is in presidents. Do you Definitely. have a lot of presidential yes, signatures? Yes, I have. I have a lot of presidents. Can, can you show us a few? Sure, I'd be happy to. It looks like you've laid out a bunch of checks for us. Uh, yes, I have, Doug. This is, uh, I think there's about 24 different presidents here. The value is what the signature is on. Now, you can get a signature of Hoover on a piece of paper, and you can pay $100 for it. You get that same signature on a check, and you're talking probably $6,000. Wow. It also depends on when it was signed. If it was signed while the man was president, you're going to pay a higher price for it. Uh, like U.S. Grant, now that's a little different with Grant. His signature is more valuable as a general than something that was signed in the White House. More people interested in the Civil War. Right. But right here I have the checks of all the way from Jane Madison, Andy Jackson, uh, U.S. Grant, Garfield, Coolidge, Taft, Woodrow Wilson. You know, I, I collect signatures myself a little bit and Checks, of course, are going to be items that are not going to be forged for the most part. That's why I kind of kind of like it. Now, like, does it have a lot to do with the popularity of the president himself? They're not really that rare, but you can pay a higher price for a Lincoln check than, say, uh, someone before him because of his popularity. And that's what kind of determined the price. How popular is that president? Mm -hmm. But some checks like by Taylor and James K. Polk are probably almost unattainable. You probably have to go to a museum to even see one. So this collection will probably never be completed. How about some of these that have been cashed? Uh, I assume the bank received them and then I would have thought they would have just been destroyed. But here they have popped up in auctions and in, in other people's hands. How does that happen? Well, a lot of banks, you know, they send them back to the, the, to the uh, person who signed them. Sometimes a president will put his checks out on the market with, with charity causes and people bid on them and that's how they get on the market a lot of times. Usually a, a uh, signature of a president is more valuable when he's in the White House. But in some cases, I come across a unique item like this, a handwritten letter by Dutch Reagan. Okay, that's President Reagan, right? Dutch was his nickname. He got the name Dutch from his dad. He got a haircut one day, a bold type haircut, and dad said, you look just like a Dutchman, and that's how it started. Okay. This is dated May the 4th, 1937. As far as I know, this is the earliest known handwritten letter by Ronnie Reagan. So he was working at WHO, a radio station in Des Moines, right. when he wrote this. Yes, a uh, lady just wrote, asked him for his autograph, and he wrote, ended up writing a, a full page uh, to the gal. You know, that's pretty hard to uh, fake, a full handwritten letter, so that's a great idea. Yes. You know that's real. That's real, plus you know, the, the postmark and everything, that when it was dated and signed. There are different types of signatures that you can collect, is that correct? That's right. There's about four different types. I'll explain them to you right now. This is what you call a printed signature. This is a Will Rogers. Now, if you can tell a printed signature by the intensity of the ink, it's completely the same throughout the signature. That's not his actual signature. That's his actual signature, but it's printed. He does it, does it one time, 
And from then on, they would copy. Right, but it's not his actual signature that right. he did at the no. time. Right. So obviously it has very little value. It has no value. No value no at all. No value at all. And this is another type of signature called a rubber stamp signature. And this is that someone will come by and stamp the signature. You can kind of tell with the hand stamp by when you look at it through a magnifying glass, you'll see missing ink voids in the signature. It looked like Swiss cheese, basically. Now another type of problem is uh, Jack Lemon here. This is a secretarial. If it looks really good, if, then you see his signature, you know. It looks like a mess. It looks like a mess. The secretarial's person it, it, tends to take their time and make a nice signature. Correct. That's, that's it, legible. It's usually a lot better. Now this is another big problem called the olive pin machine. It looks good. It's done with a ballpoint pen, so it looks authentic, but it's not. It has no value. And you can be suspicious if it's an olive pin signature. When the pin comes down on the piece of paper, It'll look like a period at the beginning of it, and then as they go through the signature, the machine goes through the signature, and as it releases, you'll see a period at the end of the signature. The machine goes at a constant speed, and so the lettering is the same thickness throughout. So when you write your name on a piece of paper, you go at a different speed. So like different points on the signature will be, the thickness will be different because of the speed of the, of the upstroke and the downstroke. Sure, okay. I think uh, Ronnie Reagan had some like 23 different olive pin signatures and, and uh, Richard Nixon had like six and John Kennedy had I think something like 13 signatures, olive pin signatures. The value, it has no value. And, and again the reason for that would be they needed to sign a lot of documents, so right. they have this machine that can mimic the exact signature. I mean, if you write to the White House, you're gonna get an olive pin signature. This is a good point here, especially on a baseball. Now, if you use a, a marker, a Sharpie pencil like this, it will fade in time, it will bleed on the leather. Oh. And that's why on a baseball, you always wanna use a ballpoint pen. Now, I have an Ozzy Smith here. Now, I got this sign November 2nd, 02. The problem is I had another one signed at the same time. Within five years, the ink was gone. There was no signature. It's just a matter of luck a lot of time if the, if the ink will adhere to the baseball leather. What a great picture of an airplane. <laughs> yes, this is my uh, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. She's probably one of the most popular signatures you can get in the entertainment field. And then on the guy side, probably Jane Dean and Humphrey Bogart. Just about all of us have an autograph somewhere in the house of somebody we think is famous, and it's probably an entertainer, our favorite singer, or somebody that was in town at the local fair or uh, had a concert and you got an autograph. If the picture is a five by seven, more than likely, it's a secretarial, it's not real, it's not authentic. An eight by 10, you have about 50% shot that it is real. An 11 by 14 photograph, it's almost 100%, it is real. Cause 11 by 14 is given out to a friend of the actor or the actress. You write to somebody in Hollywood, you're gonna get back probably a secretarial or a, uh, a rubber stamp, a rubber stamp, print a signature, fat similar, whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I don't even bother to write to the Hollywood people anymore. You pretty much have to catch them in person. In person, you have to catch them in person. What's next on your list? Is there a piece that you are really dying to, <sighs> to come across? Well, <laughs> I, uh, I like I said, I collect in all fields, and one thing I've been collecting is have baseball signed by all the moonwalkers. I am still looking for a Jim Irwin single signed baseball. I've had his signature combined with other astronauts, but I have never found a single signed Jim Irwin baseball. Now, why is it so important that an astronaut would sign a baseball? They're not connected. I don't know. I think because it, it looks shaped like a moon and Sign on the sweet spot. It's just something I'm into. It's oh. just it's, it's individual uh, 
love for something that they once signed. It's something that's in your blood. You just want, it's a collective blood. You just want to keep collecting. You get a complete set of presidential checks. I get that complete. I probably go to maybe White House cards signed by the president or some other type of endeavor. Almost like an addiction, you might say, but it's a, it's a fun addiction. It, it's a very knowledgeable, very happy to keep me, I guess, going. Oh, yeah, keep, it's a lot keep, of fun. It's a, it's a hobby. It's a hobby, and it's something that I can do until the day I die. Got a collection that you think is neat, unique, cool? Drop us a line, send us a few pictures at collectingseriously.com. You know, Tom's autograph collection goes really deep. He not only had autographs on paper and photographs, but he also had a lot of baseballs. Each one of them had like one signature per ball. Now I've got a ball here from the 1940s and 50s that was my uncle's, and it has like a dozen autographs on it. Can you tell me anything about that? Sure. Well, there's Leo DeRocher right there and Stan Musial right underneath. This is neat. You know, one thing I noticed right away is that some of the signatures are kind of faded. And what this tells me is that this was not all signed at the same time. It was signed over a number of seasons or years using different ink pens, and so therefore you get some variance in uh, fading. This was probably a ball that your uncle carried with him when he went to the ballpark, and if he ran into a player, after the game and could get it signed, well, you know, he had it handy. Yeah, I'm sure he just threw it in his pocket. Yeah, that's it's kind of a historical record of all the games that he went to over the years. So different inks will fade over time? Right. Most collectors like to have single sign balls. That way they get the Hall of Famer or the person that they're really interested in to sign right across the sweet spot. And you don't have a, a bunch of other names around that to detract from the way that it looks. The sweet spot is where the laces come closest together. For example, here you have a Hall of Famer and then it's signed by a bunch of $5 signatures around it. And sometimes those signatures run right into the one that you don't you know, want messed with. Value doesn't mean a whole lot to me in this case because it was my uncle's. I'm never gonna sell it. It's a family heirloom now, so it's priceless to me. Who's the current president? Uh, nope. <laughs> Richard M. Nixon, according to the game. I know who you were going to say. This game says 1965 on the bottom, but here it says 1969. Well, so. that, that was the original copyright. Oh, okay, so I didn't get a first edition on this game, evidently. All right, uh, the current president, Richard M. Nixon. Man, how do you get these out of here? Well, don't break the game. Well, how did they originally do it? I bet this thing is... <laughs> well, that's why the game is in such pristine condition, because... You need fingernails to play do. this game. You know, let's talk about value and worth. I mean, we saw a lot of that in the autograph collection. You know, let's say now I've got something that's worth $100, and I think, because of time, next year it's going to be worth $150. And then the year after that, another $50 up $200. You know, I, I just think all collections are going to go up. but. Popularity plays a big role in this too, don't you think? Oh, definitely. I mean, timing is everything. I can tell you so many different examples of where people have waited too long to sell their item. For example, let's say you have Elvis Presley's autograph. There was a day when people would have paid big money for that. Right. And now that generation is kind of past. He's still popular. I mean, don't get me wrong, but there's just not as many buyers out there, so the price goes down. Well, look at this. It's a start up here. Right. It is, this is where you start, and this is where you end. This wow. Is where, this wow. Is, this is where our <laughs> segment ends. <laughs> this is where you reach the White House. You reach the White House. Mm -hmm. The more coins you get, gets you to the White House. Exactly. That is the... Now oh, we learn yeah. what's mm -hmm. behind this game. Hey, Doug, look what I just got. Oh, cool. I love the football. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that horsey. Yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> horsey. <laughs> I want to ride the horsey. <laughs> 